All right, thanks for watching and welcome to the ultimate calculus two problem because today's problem combines volumes with U sub with trig integrals with series. So yes, it's a fun for you and the whole family. And in fact, it's a very cute problem. Suppose you have the following scenario. Suppose you have the following strange function. On 0 to pi, it's sine of x. From pi to 2 pi, it's a bit smaller. Sine of x over 2. So sine of x, sine of x over 2. And then it just gets smaller and smaller. From 0 to 3 pi, it's sine of x over 3, etc., etc. Then you get this really weird curve. So, uh, in other words, f of x is just sine of x over n plus 1 on the interval pi n, should have used pi n, but it's okay, and pi n plus 1. Right? This is precisely what this is, you know. Uh, uh, from 0 to pi, n is 0, so we have sine of x. From pi to 2 pi, n is 1, so we have sine of x over 2. And here's a question. Suppose you take this weird function and you revolve it around the x-axis. Then what you get is some sort of a pearl necklace. So we would like to calculate the volume of a pearl necklace from 0 to infinity. And how do you do that? Well, notice the slices here are disks. And therefore, you precisely use the disk method. So by the disk method, it's like a disk jockey, but with methods, OK? The volume is just pi times the integral from 0 to pi to infinity of f of x squared dx. But notice f has different components, right? Here it's sine of x, then sine of x over 2, sine of x over 3, etc., etc. So really the volume is just a sum. Sum from 1 to infinity of the integral from 0 to, from each interval, so pi n, uh, yeah. So it would, should be pi n minus 1 to pi n. I just shifted of uh, sine of x over n and dx, squared dx. So it's almost the same function. It's ex in fact exactly the same function. What I'm still saying is it, on from 0 to pi, so from n equals 1, we get sine of x. From pi to 2 pi, we get sine of x over 2, etc., etc. So I just shifted indices here, and what we get is pi times the sum from n from 1 to infinity of, let's say, 1 over n squared times this integral, pi times n minus 1 times pi n of sine squared of x dx. Now notice, this is a difficult sum, because this 1 over n squared depends on n, and this integral, technically, also depends on n. But I want to show you that, in fact, it does not depend on n. So that's a nice thing. Consider pi times n minus 1, and then pi n, sine squared of x over n squared. No, oh, well, we already have the n squared up, dx. And now let's choose a, use a quick u sub. Let's let u be x minus this jump pi n minus 1. Well, then du is dx. And also, well, you add pi n minus 1. Well, it's pi n minus 1 minus pi n minus 1, which is 0. And u of pi n, well, if you want, it's pi n minus pi n minus 1. So it's pi n minus pi n plus pi really bothers me that it's not pi n, but okay. And that's zero. So we get integral, sorry, uh, pi, my bad. Get integral from zero to pi 
of sine squared of, so x is just u plus pi n minus 1, du. And I'm claiming this is just the same thing as the integral from 0 to pi of sine squared of u, du. Why is that? Well, look, sine of u plus pi, any multiple of pi, really, pi m, why not? Okay, that sine of u cosine of pi m plus cosine of u sine of pi m, or sine of pi m is zero, cosine of pi m, that's plus or minus one. And the reason this is interesting is if you square this, plus or minus one squared is one. And so sine squared of u plus any multiple of m is just sine squared of u. So that's why this integral just transforms into the integral from zero to pi of sine squared of u. So really, this integral doesn't depend on n at all. It just becomes, so pi pretty picture, just becomes pi times the sum from n from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. And the integral, if you want, from 0 to pi of sine squared. I used u, but we can go back to x. So sine squared of x dx. And the point is, this integral just pops up. So pi times the integral from 0 to pi sine squared of x dx times the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. Now, I'll get back to this one soon. And yeah, perfect transition. So I'll get back to this sum soon. Now let's actually evaluate this integral using some integration techniques. So I guess that was the first step. Now let's do the second step. Let's calculate the integral from 0 to pi of sine squared of x dx equals to what? I have done a video on this, but it turns out, uh, well, and the way I did the video, you just use the fact that, wow, the sine squared of x is, I think, um, is it, yeah, 1 minus cosine of 2x over 2. And you just integrate that. But here's a more, a cleverer way. Notice, sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals 1. Okay, trig identity. Then integrate from 0 to pi. 0 to pi and 0 to pi. Well, this integral is just pi. And this is what we want, and this is weird. But for this one, let's, um, um, what do I want to say? Let's use a u sub, and you'll see in a second why we do that. Let u be x minus pi over 2. Then the integral becomes, uh, let's see, uh, minus pi over 2 pi over 2, and then cosine squared of, I guess, u plus pi over 2. No, then dx is du. Okay, now cosine, let's see, cosine of u plus pi over 2. Well, that's just cosine of u, cosine of pi over 2, uh, minus sine of u, Sine of uh, sine of pi over two. Yep, that's fine. And you'll see why we use pi over two. Cosine of pi over two is zero, so we get minus sine of u, and sine of pi over two is one. So cosine of u plus pi over two, it's minus sine of u. But if you square it, this becomes a plus. So we get integral from minus pi over two to pi over two of sine squared of u du. Oh man, darn it. Uh, it's not quite the same because this is the integral from 0 to pi and this is the integral from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. But I'm claiming it doesn't really matter because what have we shown here? If you let m be 1, then we get sine of u plus m 
uh, so sine of u plus pi equals minus sine of u. Particular sine squared of u plus pi is just sine squared of u. Which means the function sine squared is periodic of period pi. In particular, if a function is periodic on any interval of length pi, you should get the same answer. But the inter integral from 0 to pi has the same length as the interval from minus pi to pi. In particular, those two integrals are the same. So this is the integral from 0 to pi of sine squared of u du. So, what do we get? We get that those two integrals are indeed the same. So we just get the integral that we want plus the integral that we want equals pi. Let me write that. So, integral from 0 to pi of sine squared of x dx plus integral from 0 to pi of sine squared of x dx equals pi. And so 2 times the integral from 0 to pi, sine squared of x dx, right, is pi. And then integral from 0 to pi of sine squared of x dx is pi over 2. So that's maybe a cleverer way of getting this formula. OK, good. So what is our answer? Our answer is pi times the answer we just found. Pi times pi over 2 times the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. Now, if you're just a calculus student, all you can really conclude is by the integral test, this converges, so we get a finite answer, which is nice. But if you want to know more, I have done a video called the Basel problem that explicitly calculates this sum. And surprisingly, the answer is pi squared over 6, which means that our final answer is pi times pi over 2 times pi squared over 6. And we get pi to the 4th over 12. Therefore, the volume of this bead is pi over 4 over 12. How cool is that? And again, this is really the ultimate calculus 2 problem because we use integrals, we use volumes, we use u sub, we use trig integrals, and we use even, even use some series there. So this is seriously awesome. All right, I hope you like this calculus extravaganza. If you want to learn more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.